end of the day. It's Mel. And me. You want to know how we did it. You want to know how we do it. You want to know how, how we, we doing, doing it. it. Welcome to the Mel and Me Podcast. <laughs> We're just gonna say it in English now. Yeah. Today. Yeah. We won't we won't be speaking in Zulu today. Yeah. So uh we're back for episode fourteen, we determined it is. Yes. Episode fourteen. Man, we are cooking. Moving along. Moving along. <laughs> so uh we're a little bit behind this week because uh we had uh, an event to attend yesterday, an award ceremony for our son. And we normally record on Saturdays in order to release it on Tuesdays. And we, we also got to get caught back up um, with being a week ahead so that we have, you know, we have a bit of a cushion so that we're not in a rush to get episodes recorded in order to release on Tuesday. Mm. So, of course, our trip to South Africa kind of kind of threw us off from that schedule because we had so much work to do there. And we're still recovering from that. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we're getting there. And so. uh here we are for episode 14. We said 14. Yes, 14. Yeah, so we're going to kind of actually move away. For the past few weeks, we've been doing a lot of content around South Africa, right? Yeah. Because we were preparing to go there, and then we spent we're time there. there, and now we're back. Yeah. Getting settled back into our life here as we work, you know, to try to keep money coming in so we can keep doing the <laughs> South Africa thing. Right. Uh, but, yeah, so we're going we're gonna to just, just kind of shift gears a little bit this week and you know we just want to again just looking at the channel growth and and just with all the engagement that we have from our south african uh brothers and sisters and then you know even people beyond south africa now we're starting to see people from other countries that are somehow finding us and i guess it's just the youtube algorithm doing its work we're thankful for the new subscribers yeah yeah and so you know we definitely want to uh and and as we tried to we tried to make clear on on some of the other episodes mm-hmm. uh, that you know our content will it will vary right you know we will definitely talk our adventures in South Africa as we visit and travel there and we you know start to make more things happen over there um, but at the same time you know Mel and me the podcast is is really uh, all about just discussing you know our perspectives on things right. as a team yeah. you know and this the, the topics can be general in nature not yeah. n- not necessarily. You know, just uh, just based on our, our our adventures in South Africa, but we think it could be pursuits. applicable to anyone anywhere. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, th- we can apply these strategies and these mm-hmm. perspectives to you know wherever you are in the world. Really. Yeah, and so you know, we just want to make sure that you know that people understand that you know we, we're definitely going to sprinkle in you know that content uh where we can and as we as we you know travel back and forth and stuff like that but then there will be some times where we'll do content like today where it's just more general stuff which let's just go ahead and get into that topic Mm -hmm. (laughs) today's topic will deal with uh pet peeves Mm. pet peeves and i actually chose to entitle this pet t peeves Mm -hmm. right right Dream relationship killers? Is it a can pet peeves be a hindrance to what could possibly become a dream relationship? In other words, someone finding a dream relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, you 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 meet somebody, or you you have a relationship, or you're in a relationship with somebody. You know, and everything is just wonderful. However, you have these pet peeves that hinder your relationships and could possibly kill that relationship yeah. right yes and so i entitled it pet t and when i do this that that's that denotes parentheses just like we do this with air quotes right and consider these air parentheses yes so I, I thought about this and i was curious as to whether or not because when you think of the term we we've always heard the term pet peeve right mm-hmm. and i i kind of compare it to the term like a pet name when yeah. you have a pet name for mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. a pet name is kind of like 
it's kind of like a, a nickname, mm -hmm. you know, a little cutesy name that right. you give somebody, right? Yeah. It's a pet name, like, you know, Schnookums <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> like, when I used to be Applebee. <laughs> that, was that a pet name? Or yeah. Was that, okay. <laughs> But uh, let's just let's just say schnookums, yeah, you know, or you know, honeybee or whatever, mm -hmm. wh wh whatever, uh, a pet name that you give somebody. Um, so I always kind of thought of pet peeve as being a similar type thing. It's but it it's not because a pet peeve is like an annoyance. It's something that and annoys I've always you, looked right? at it like that. Yes. And so I was just sitting around thinking, like I sometimes do, and I was like, I wonder if that was shortened for petty. Mm -hmm. Because a pet peeve really is that. It's something that's petty. It's yes. something that's petty. It's exactly. a petty thing. Yes. Something, something that's, that's really petty. insignificant, <laughs> right? But, but we, we allow it, uh, such things to get under our skin. skin. And, yes. And, and, and it affects our, our relationships, relationships with people, with people yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, or, or even uh, dealing, dealing in certain situations. situations mm -hmm. Those pet peeves can, can pull us down. Mm -hmm. So I thought it might be... It, and so let, let let me let me go into what, what kind of brought this whole thing up. A few weeks ago, when we were in South Africa, I was browsing social media, and mm -mm, I just spilled tea on myself. Ugh, sorry, got the melamine mugs right. <laughs> <laughs> I push these like every week. We're gonna start selling them, I guess. So, uh, um. I was I was on I was browsing social media when we when we were in South Africa mm. and I saw this post from someone and it had to do with um I guess someone was complaining. You know how they post memes and stuff, well, even though you're not on social media, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Uh you have these these memes and stuff that people post or mm. you know, just thoughts that they express around certain things and, and one thing that came up was somebody was complaining about the fact that I don't know if it was their mate, a significant other, whatever you want to call it, but they expressed this uh, annoyance mm -hmm. with individ with people mm -hmm. who tend to sit on the bed in street clothes, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, in other words, you have, you know, people or whatever who, you know, you have your house or whatever, your, your domain, whatever you want to call it, that you're protective of, I mm -hmm. guess, in those, of those spaces, and you have certain requirements yeah. for existing in those spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, certain people, and I'm sure many of you out there, uh, uh, have this pet peeve. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like you sitting on their bed in street clothes. Right. They figure some you have pajamas only. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, they, they, they view their bed as for sleeping and yeah. relaxing only, and, yeah. and they should only be in their bed in pajamas or you know uh, pajama type attire mm -hmm. or right naked if you will yeah. i don't know yeah uh but they don't want you in their bed in street clothes right now i assume the same thing applies if you have a let's just say a husband or wife or two people in a relationship or whatever mm -hmm. right and one and i'm i'm guessing it's typically probably going to be the the wife cuz those are <laughs> why got to be cuz i think those things <laughs> do tend to be women things. I don't think men, or at least it hasn't been but my experience as a man. Like I've, I've honestly never heard a man make statements like that when in regards to the bed. Oh, dog, don't sit, I, ain't, I don't believe in getting in the bed in, in street clothes. Mm. I, I've never, I've, the only time I've ever seen that sentiment expressed is from women, seriously. Yeah. Mm. When it comes to clothes in the bed. Mm. Okay, but, um. But anyway, um, but they that that's a pet peeve. But yeah. ima imagine imagine two people who are in a relationship and one has that annoyance and the other one doesn't. Right. Right. That mm -hmm. can cause friction in a relationship. For so, sure. so 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 my point is, I saw this discussion and I actually I, I placed a, a comment onto the thread and I told the individual and you know who you are if you happen to see this. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to call your name because you didn't give me permission. When I told you that I was going to do an episode on this and I told you that I was going to make mention of you, uh, but I wouldn't say your name unless you unless you wanted me to. And you didn't you didn't take it upon yourself to say, oh, yeah, you can call me out or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm going to hold true to that. But, you know, it's somebody that I grew up with essentially a little bit younger than me. 
uh, you know, come from back where I come from, close friend of the family and actually relative uh, in, in, in a sense, you know, mm-hmm. kind of ex- extended family, you know, like family mm-hmm. from back in the day. Um, but, yeah, I told you I was going to do an episode on this. And so here we are. We talking about this uh, because I just it just made me think about certain things. I was like, man, you know, I, I couldn't that couldn't be me in that situation with that individual. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I not only thought about that. So, yeah, so that was that was that was the impetus, mm-hmm. you know, f- for me coming up with this topic. Mm-hmm. And then I also thought about some other things that that we've kind of that people have like yeah. an, a, another another situation that you see that a lot of people subscribe to. And I actually I actually had an exchange with a relative. Mm-hmm. You know who you are if you see this. Uh, they posted something mm-hmm. uh, and I had a small debate. Uh, with them about it, it wasn't like a, a debate debate it's, I just expressed my particular opinion about it and they made a counterpoint you know and, and you know we moved on from that but it's the shoes in the house thing oh yes a lot wearing of people shoes in the house yeah because a lot of people don't want you in their house yeah with shoes, with on. shoes on yeah right and so uh you know there are different types of arguments that can be, be made around that but mm-hmm. you know while and, and let me just put it out there so this discussion, people, um, this has nothing to do with any particular individual. We know many people who yeah. subscribe to yeah. either of those two things <laughs> and mm-hmm. even other things. Yeah. I guess we I guess we probably have our own little Everybody, pet peeves. Uh, that most we subscribe people have to. some type of pet peeve. So, yeah. you know, this topic of discussion is to say nothing of anyone. It's not to judge you for your choices and your desires and how you choose to manage your home. Right. Okay. I think that we should all respect each other's uh, preferences. Yeah. But at the same time, we have our preferences. Oh yeah, for sure. And your shirt is like majorly bunched up. Like, oh. It looks crazy. Oh, that, oh, that's because I was just <coughs> too far. Yeah, yeah. It looked like really crazy as well. Oh. Um. So, you know, and, and that's what it is. Uh, we we respect each other's choices and stuff like that. It's just that. You know, we have our perspective and our outlook on certain things and the next person has theirs. And so, you know, you make the adjustments when necessary. Um, and and that's basically it. But we're going to talk about it. You know, that's that's all it is, because yeah. it's 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 something to discuss. It's something to to give us something to think about mm-hmm. and uh, and maybe something to reconsider. Maybe we can look at certain pet peeves that we have and maybe mm-hmm. we'll say something that'll Give someone, you know, a reason, something to reconsider. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Well, yeah. let's just get into it. Mm. But uh, but that's what it was. I, I was thinking back to those those exchanges on social media mm-hmm. around those two topics in particular. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So those are big. So uh, so when it comes to pet peeves or what I like to call petty peeves, mm-hmm. right? Because it, it, it's petty. Mm-hmm. Um. The question that I have is, and I have for you, I'll just ask you, mm. what's your opinion? Do you think that pet peeves are self-centered in nature? Do you think it's a self-centered type of thing with pet peeves? I Just for the record, I think it is. I think pet peeves, they are self-centered in nature. I guess what's it, your opinion? It, well, to me, it would depend on what the pet peeve is. Why is that? Because, you know... I, I don't necessarily view it in that way because I know I have my own and maybe that could be why I don't view it in that way. But that's, I just think... That I don't, sounds rather self-centered in and well, of itself. No, I don't consider <laughs> think that about it. See, I don't consider... You keep saying I, I, I. See, that's the, the ultimate of, of being self-centered right there. But go ahead, continue. Finish explaining. But I'm just of the, of, of the mindset. It just depends on what the pet peeve is. I mean, if it's, depending if it's something related to the home... You know, okay, if we you you use the example of uh, the shoes, clothes, and the bed, or whatever, I don't necessarily depending on the reasoning behind why they may have an issue with that because we don't know we don't know the reasoning behind why someone may have certain pet peeves, and so I think if we have an under, if we have an understanding of that before we, you know, determine if it's self-centered or not, that, to me, I think that needs to be taken into consideration. Okay, so 
I'm, I'm going to use the example of the shoes in the house because that's mm-hmm. a big thing with us. Yeah. And, and that's something that we that we live by in which we don't. Now, we, we don't do we, it. We, we, we don't, we don't, do we don't it. require people to take well, off their shoes in our home. If you choose to, fine. If not, whatever. We I don't. don't I may or may not, you know, walk around my house with my shoes on or not or whatever. But it, it's, not even, on, it's not even something not even something that I've ever really thought about. Mm-mm. Um, You know, because of. You know, coming up, it was never an issue. Oh, I mean, no, we, we, we grew up in the project. Right. I mean, you, you had cockroaches crawling all over the place, <laughs> floors and dirt. You lived in the damn projects, right? I so mean, I like, didn't stay in the projects, like, but not, even still, right, but we, I, we didn't grow up with, you need to take your shoes off. Now, what I will say is this, though. We did do that in the wintertime. We took uh, our boots obviously, off. Obviously, we lived in but Chicago the, yeah, and you got right. snow and slush right. and salt and so stuff like that. So that was the only yeah, time. Course. But just for like daily, right. you know, hey, just coming in the house, take off yeah. your shoes. Now, what we did have was the plastic on the furniture. Of now, course. that was a big thing. Don't sit yeah, on the furniture here. Yeah. There's plastic on there. So right. that was a big thing with us right. growing up. It wasn't, it wasn't with the shoes. Yeah. So I just think... I think there could be an element of narcissism in our, I mean, it, in our it pet could peeves. Be, it could be. It could be. It, it, so if you think about it. So I, I looked up narcissism, and we all know what narcissism right. means. But, you know, definition basically, you know, a, a perceived sense of self-importance mm-hmm. uh, coupled with a lack of empathy for others, right? Mm-hmm. So if I just take and I just look at things like, let's just say, not wearing shoes in the house or mm-hmm. you must you must take your shoes off when you come into my house let's mm-hmm. just couch it like that mm-hmm. because that's that's typically the way it mm-hmm. it, it is right mm-hmm. and there are reasons that that people right. have that they you know some people have expensive floors or carpets right. and stuff right. like that they right. don't want to be bothered with that right i i, I get all that mm-hmm. but at the same time when you when you place it in in the terms that i just presented right. again it's a self-centered type thing this is my space and you must do this in my space for this reason, because I don't want to be bothered with this. I don't want to have to be cleaning my carpet or I don't want to I don't want scuffs on my floor, mm-hmm. that that type of thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, again, again, when we bought this our house. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. One of the things that 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 played into our floor selection was durability. Right. Exactly. You can either get this type of floor or right. you can get this for this look, yeah, but it has a level of durability. Well, you right. know what? I want that. Yes. Because I don't want to have to be concerned about scuffs and all that kind of stuff and mm-hmm. gouges and, and mm-hmm. that type of thing. Right. So, but those are calculations that we made. And in doing so, mm-hmm. right, I accepted, you know, a certain outcome from that. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it was going to have certain cleaning requirements or not have certain cleaning requirements in that and case. I mean, it's going to be wear and tear anyways and understanding that some scuff right. marks may get on there and we were actually okay with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, but but the thing is, um, like I said, the narcissistic element mm-hmm. uh, of things come into play there is mm-hmm. like, you know, I want this. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say self, so there's a self-centered piece. And it's all good and fine. Again, it's all good and fine, people. It's just that we're just having a discussion about it. But it's just my viewpoint on it, right? Mm-hmm. And so... You know, um, and like you just talked about the uh, the plastic on the furniture, mm-hmm. right? Now, of course, that's our generation growing up. Of course, people don't put plastic <laughs> on furniture anymore. At least I hope not. I don't right. think we still got the. I don't down know. Its- <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Right? Yeah. Uh, it, it was the old Victorian style yes, furniture and stuff that that people would put put into. It their may homes not be put- plastic these days, but it could be white furniture these days. You know, if you're getting light color furniture. You yeah, know, but I'm talking about people sell- putting covers. Oh like yeah, yeah. No, so plastic no, covers. No, I'm over saying furniture. moving you away from that, that anymore, to right? you know, in today's time, it could be okay. I have this light color yeah, yeah, furniture. Yeah, yeah. I don't want people sitting I see. on. But yes. But, but back in the day. Yeah. Back in the day, in our in our grandmother's homes. Yeah. Stuff like that. Oh, yeah. You had the living room yeah. that you couldn't go into. You yes. couldn't sit in it. It's yes. fully furnished living room. Yep. It's got plastic on the furniture, but sit you couldn't go. Floor. But you couldn't go into that living room and sit, sit on down. The floor. And so, <sighs> I wonder. I, I wonder, wonder if, if things, things like that, that kind of came out of a sense, sense of lacking. Right. right? In, in other words, words if, if you, you just, just look at us as black people in the United States, States and what our history has been, been yeah. right, mm-hmm. with being deprived yeah. of certain privileges and, and, and uh, certain economic, economic 
mm-hmm. uh, benefits, benefits and stuff, stuff like, like that. In other words, being able to have some money and being able to have things and, and stuff like that. And I think like too, that. just maybe wanting to preserve for a length of time because therefore you don't have to, you know, worry about wear and tear on it so quickly and you needing to replace it again because obviously that's going to cost money. So I think a lot of that played into it as well. Right, but that, but that's essentially saying what I'm saying. Exactly. And from a position, from a standpoint of lacking. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't mm-hmm. have the money to go out and buy right. new stuff but ever mm-hmm. so often, if, right. if ever, right? Right. So I need to preserve what it is exactly. I have. And so therefore, I'm not going to enjoy it mm-hmm. and I'm going to not going to allow you to enjoy it. Right. 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 In other words, right. to, to sit your butt down on a nice, comfortable sofa, although right. the sofas didn't look very comfortable. They were then. not. They were not. Um, you know, to, to, to be able to take a seat and mm-hmm. kick your feet up because mm-hmm. I want that to be on display. Right. And I want that. I want you to be able to marvel over how beautiful that piece of furniture is <laughs> because it's mine, right? That's yeah. Again, it's that self-centered, narcissistic element. This is mine. I worked hard for it. And so I'm going to prop it up there so we can all sit and look at it and stare at it and, and just be reminded of how beautiful it is and how beautiful it makes my house look. And you're never going to sit on it. Matter of fact, don't ever go in that room. That's the way it was coming up. Right. Oh, if you did go in there again, you couldn't sit on it. You had to sit on the floor. Yeah. Right. And so, and so, you know, it just reminds me of that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Again, I, uh, technically a pet peeve, mm-hmm. if you will, you know, mm-hmm. sitting on my furniture. Yeah. And I don't want you sitting on that, mm-hmm. sitting on my furniture. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but yeah, but that's, it, it just reminds me of stuff <laughs> like that. Um, but when you look at things like, and we had this discussion when we first got together, like how, how we manage our, and I forget the situation that, mm. you know, that, that we were thrust into to even cause us to have the discussion, but mm-hmm. it is something that we definitely discuss. Like, you know, what's important to us. Oh. Okay. And, mm-hmm. and as you know, <clears throat> to me, you know, uh, looking at it from the standpoint of empathy, mm-hmm. from an empathetic perspective, it has always been important to me to never make anyone who comes into my personal domain uncomfortable. Right. I don't want to inconvenience anybody. Yeah. You know, now it's obvious if 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 it's a situation where the weather's bad and it's a rainstorm and you know, you you got wet shoes and maybe you might track track mud or mm-hmm. something into the house or right. you know, who knows what else. Um, you know, then I totally understand that. Yeah. You know, but I'm never going to, you know, require uh, anyone who comes into my personal domain mm-hmm. to remove those shoes. And there's a couple of reasons behind that. And, and there's a, you know, one of the points that I made and I really didn't get into it in my social media exchange is that one, ex- one, one justification that people almost said excuse, one justification that people tend to use about the, the shoes being taken off, um, is tracking in germs because yeah. you're from, you're coming from outside and but you've been walking on the pavement. Feet- Right. And and we, we and we discussed this, yeah. right? There's a couple of different ways you can look at it. Yeah. Like you can either let's say if you throw a party, like a big shindig mm-hmm. and you have, you know, and, and everybody has their shoes off. Yeah. Now, you know, I've heard the counterpoint of well, you can provide footies for mm-hmm. people or yeah. shoe covers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can. But then that that's also a thing that you have to launder, you have to wash. You know, you got to be giving out footies. And then not everybody is like eating. It's like eating somebody else's cooking. Somebody can come to your house and you can have footies, footsies or whatever that you've laundered or socks and stuff. And they don't want to be wearing your socks. Even if you bought some, you know, that's still money that you're spending. That you're spending. You got to have new on disposable, disposable or mm-hmm. new socks and stuff mm-hmm. for people. You know, but yeah. some people are not going to want to hear that. You know, the socks are clean. They get them out of the hamper or whatever. I launder yeah. them after every, you know, visit or whatever. They, yeah. Yeah, I don't want your socks on my feet. They may yeah. not tell you that. Right. But that's what they're thinking. Yeah. Right. So there's just a myriad of things, but you could do that. And then here's, a, here's another thing, though. But even, you know, with, with having on socks but when you take your shoes off you're still getting germs on your floor because like i like the way i look at it is you're getting everybody's foot fungus mm-hmm. you know everybody has foot fungus in their feet yeah and, and not everybody takes care of their feet the same you know some people not are going to be walking around barefoot yeah especially in the summertime you may yeah. have somebody that's wearing sandals or whatever that mm-hmm. show up at your house yeah you know and they got their bare feet on your mm-hmm. floor so you got their foot fungus and if you're having a, a party with a bunch of people there you got everybody sharing mm-hmm. foot fungus and i can tell you for a fact when i was in the military and i was training recruits 
that was one of the you always saw that you get 88 recruits that live in the same space mm -hmm. and they're all especially during shower time you they're required to purchase shower shoes mm -hmm. you know as part of their their seat bag because they're never supposed to be on the floor with their bare feet and but you still get we still had individuals who would do that mm -hmm. and the problem is was that you know especially with all the training and the running and the sweating and wearing the, the boots that they wore and stuff there's a lot of fungus buildup mm -hmm. and that stuff spreads throughout the entire compartment yeah. you know like wildfire right yeah and before you know it all 88 of those recruits would have athlete's foot you know foot fungus and their feet yeah. would be peeling and the skin would so, be I mean, peeling to out and toes bleeding perspective because that can really impact somebody it, exactly mm -hmm. exactly so i think back to those things when mm -hmm. i was in the military and how and, and the smell you know yeah. from the fungus yes. of people feet and it they would share and it was mm -hmm. spread throughout the entire compartment because they're all walking on the same floor with their socks mm -hmm. you know or barefoot and stuff like that so you're spreading that foot fungus right and so i view it from that perspective and that's yeah. why you know i would much rather deal with okay we all keep our shoes on you know what I'm saying? I can clean my floors when you leave. Yeah. I can mop the floors. I can disinfect. I can vacuum. I can do whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but, you know, with everybody's feet yeah. on the floor without shoes on, guess what? You're, you're spreading foot. I just never really gave it a second thought. It was never really a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, hey, I mean, because, again, it's it's not what I was accustomed to. So that's right. why I never gave it a second thought. So, uh, yeah. And, and the other thing that I, I tend to think about is, you know, when you have someone to remove their shoes, and I always feel like whenever I've taken my shoes off, it's like taking my clothes off. Like you become naked, you become vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. You become vulnerable yeah. when you remove your shoes. Exposed. And so, yeah, and, and, I, <laughs> and I, I felt like this because it's like, you always feel like if something goes down, like if an emergency happens or something jumps off, it's oh, like if you yeah. sleep nude or something and somebody breaks in your house at yeah, night. Yeah, that's true. You know, you got to get up and fight right. and you're naked. Yeah, right? a sight to see. I, I, <laughs> I feel the same way when it comes to like once I remove my shoes. It's oh, like, yeah. you know, you're in a vulnerable state because you're, you're on your bare feet. If you need to get up and go, you know, if there's an emergency, you know, you, you're vulnerable. Because People you may don't not have necessarily like feet. how they feet look either. And that's the other thing. <laughs> You know, some, feet is not pretty. some 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 people got ugly feet. Some people got funky feet. <laughs> you know, and you're gonna smell it when they take them shoes off, even mm -hmm. if you give them some socks to put on. Mm -hmm. So that's just uh, I don't want to spend too much time on the shoe yeah. thing because I know that that that's a that's a touchy point for for a yeah. lot of people because you know, and, and then some people um, it's a part of their culture. Yeah, certain cultures you go in, you know, yeah. especially like Asian cultures, yeah. I, I believe. Uh, they they typically take their shoes off. Yeah, you know, uh, Canadians too. I think people in Canada yeah, they're big so. on removing their, yeah, their shoes. So too, yeah, because yeah, I remember when I was uh, working with a guy producing music some years ago. He was Canadian, mm. and when I went to his apartment, he made me take my shoes off. Yeah, and then I felt vulnerable. Yeah, I'm like I I just felt like small. Like yeah. when he made me take my shoes off, <laughs> I was like it was crazy. Yeah. So anyway, so we're not going to spend too much time on that. But the it, the, the whole I guess the basis of this this whole thing is can these pet peeves be relationship killers? Because I was thinking when I read the post on social media, I was mm -hmm. like, I was thinking in terms of like uh, being in a relationship with somebody. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I would like to think that I'm a good catch. Mm -hmm. Would you say I'm a good catch? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I would be with a little you bit. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not perfect, but yeah, yeah. I would like to think that I'm a that I'm a pretty decent catch, right? Yeah. But over the years and conversations I've had with people mm -hmm. and and uh, seeing those types of sentiments expressed around pet peeves about like things like you know mm -hmm. I couldn't have no man up in my bed with no street clothes on. It's like, and I thought to myself, you know what? As great of a guy as you think I am, or you might have complimented me on this mm -hmm. or that. You couldn't be with me. Mm. We would make it. Yeah. You know, and so I kind of flash back to that whole thing when I saw that post. Yeah. And so the thought came into my mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, have individuals, have there been individuals out there who have potentially lost out on relationships? Lost out on a wonderful relationship with someone because of, their because of some pet T mm -hmm. peeve. Mm -hmm. That they saw in that potential mate, maybe it was on a date, or maybe it was due to some interaction with them, mm -hmm. and it became a deal breaker for them. And they never 
got to that point of realizing what might have been a fruitful a fruitful interaction or relationship with that person. Yeah. Yeah. And believe it or not, it can happen because yeah, it can. I, I can only imagine what it would be like um, if you were the type of individual who had a problem with somebody being in the in the bed with clothes on. Yeah. Because I'm going to get in my bed with clothes on. <laughs> I, I, I look at it like this. <laughs> with all that I do and the, the hard work that I put forth over my life. Yeah. And I just feel like you need to be comfortable I, in, in your home. In, in my, this, this is my mm-hmm. house. Comfortable that's the way home. I feel. This is my house. Now, that's that's some self-centered. That's exactly. Self, that's self-centered, it is. Right? It it's is. my house. But it it's in a different light, though. I'm, I'm saying I want to be comfortable, and I'm not yeah. going to make a big deal about such a petty thing. Right. Because if you're yeah, just talking germs, that. if you're concerned about germs, right. you're concerned about germs being on your body, on your clothes or whatever, when I mean, you sit in the bed. Day, all day. Listen, folks, newsflash for everybody out there. It doesn't matter if you take off your shoes, if you take off your clothes, there are germs all around us. You got Everywhere. millions and millions of germs in your clothes and on your body, even when you take those clothes off and get in that bed. Mm-hmm. As we move around right now, we're sitting into this room yeah. and we got this fan spinning, circulating yeah. all this air. All the germs that's in this house are on us. Yep. We can't see them. Yep. Right. So I just feel like it's a senseless it's a senseless kind of argument to make that you're concerned about germs because we got germs on us all day, every day. That's oh, that's yeah. why we have immune systems. Exactly. You know, now I'm, I'm, I'm obviously not going to get into my bed if I've been out gardening. Yeah. You know, or, 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 yeah. or mulching. Yeah. Putting mulch in the mulch beds and right. stuff like that. Or like the last couple of days when I've been uh, changing the oil the in the car. Yeah, right, right, right. exactly. I'm obviously not going to get into yeah. my bed. You know, after I've done an oil change and I may have, We're just you know, sitting around from day to day and we got to close. Okay, let me go lay down and take a nap. We please, do that all the time. Please, Some yeah. people don't like you um, uh, having your shoes on, when having shoes on when you land bed or even on the couch. Bed, right. right. Period. Cause, Cause, take your know, shoes off. Yeah, because, you know, there, there are times where I may go sit up on the bed for something. something. I'm, I'm doing something, something and I'll, I'll cross my legs. Yeah. And, yeah, I got my shoes on. I'm not concerned about it. I'm not concerned about it. Yeah, we do that all the time. You know, um... So, so for, for me, it's, it's just, just not a big deal. deal. But, but, I, but, I, but I get it. Some, some people say, hey, some, some people are kind of germaphobe. And that's yeah. really what it comes down to. Yeah. It's, 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 it comes, comes down to being a germaphobe. germaphobe. But the bottom line is that we got germs on us. Whether yes. we want to believe it or not. Yeah, and it's not going anywhere. Whether we got them anywhere. shoes on, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. The fan is circulating stuff around unto mm-hmm. us. and yeah, Those type of things. I just choose to not personally have that as a as a, a pain point for myself. And, and I don't want to put people who come into my domain uh, into a state of discomfort mm-hmm. by placing that requirement upon yeah. them. So yeah. that that's my attempt to be empathetic toward others and kind of think bigger than and, and beyond myself and what my personal uh, desires are, my personal annoyances are for something mm-hmm. like that. Right. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I, I just, I just feel like, you know, and, and if, if there's anyone out there who, who, uh, you know, who has a pet peeve or might have taken a second to, to, to consider. Uh, have you ever had a, a pet peeve come in between you and an individual or someone, a, a, a pet peeve that someone had mm-hmm. that came between you, uh, mm-hmm. the two of you in your relationship? Be interesting to, to, to know. It can even be, you know, it don't even have to be relationships. It be pet peeves with family, all yeah. of that. Yeah, Friends. Family. But Friends. but but those are still relationships. It's still relationships. Just a different type of different relationship, type. right? Exactly. Not an intimate relationship. Exactly. It's a familial yes. relationship mm-hmm. or a professional relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, same thing. But yeah, yeah but I, I just think you know, couldn't be with me. Couldn't be with me. <laughs> you know, but I I think those pet peeves are are kind of shaped by our personal viewpoints and our history and our upbringing oh, yeah. and stuff like. Oh we, yeah. Yeah, a lot of that comes. You know, like we life. talked about the uh, the furniture, the plastic on the furniture mm-hmm. and stuff, and we adopt a lot of that stuff. Oh yeah, stuff gets passed down just like For anything sure. else. It gets passed down from mm-hmm. from parents, mm-hmm. you know, to us and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, but I, I try to uh, I try to as far as you know certain pet peeves go, I do try to go back and consider my upbringing and my history. And like mm-hmm. I say, man, I yeah, I grew up in the projects, man. There's mm-hmm. nothing. That, you know, we, of course we evolve, mm-hmm. right? We evolve and we grow, we mature, all that type of thing. Mm-hmm. As we climb the economic ladder and stuff like that, our requirements kind of change. But at the same time, I still try to maintain 
a broader perspective. Yeah. You know, because, you know, not everybody is, you know, a, a, not every society is a bourgeois society, you know, yeah. where you have the best of everything and, <laughs> you know, and everything is always clean and pristine <laughs> and, you know, right. uh, there's always running water 24 hours a day where you can, you know, shower three and four times a day, you yeah. know, yeah. stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's just little stuff like I just try to look at that broader perspective, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, but it, it, it's shaped by those things. Yeah. But so thinking personally, because we do have our own pet peeves like you alluded to earlier, mm-hmm. right? So I'll ask you. <laughs> what would be a pet peeve that you have mm-hmm. that I tend to push that button or I kind of, you know, uh, things that I do, something that I might do mm-hmm. that triggers mm-hmm. one of your pet peeves? Leaving dishes in the sink when the dishwasher is when the dishwasher is clear and there's no dirty dishes or there's just a few dirty dishes in there and there's room to put the dirty dishes in there, you put them in the sink. Okay, so why do you think I would put the dishes in the sink instead of opening up the um, the dishwasher and put them in there? You, One of the reasons you've given me is in the morning you say, okay, I'm making my breakfast and I'm getting back to doing work. I'm going to get to it later. Mm-hmm. Most of the time you never get around later to doing it. I'm not saying all the time, but my thing is it takes all of two seconds to load in a bowl or a plate into the dishwasher. The time it takes you to sit it in the sink, you can simply put it in the dishwasher. So it takes more than two seconds. It actually takes quite a bit more than two seconds to do that. But it's again, less than a minute. Right. But again, when I'm working mm-hmm. and I work from home, as mm-hmm. we, we both do, you kind of get into a groove of things, right? Mm-hmm. And to take the time out to open the dishwasher and not only just open the dishwasher, but I got to rinse, rinse the dishes out, right? To make sure that there's no, you know, no food debris on it before putting it into the, into the dishwasher because we don't want it to accumulate in the bottom of the mm-hmm. dishwasher, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. So, and, and not only that, but then the utensil, right? Mm-hmm. You got to insert the utensil into mm-hmm. the little hole slot in the mm-hmm. little, mm-hmm. the holder, you know, in there. So that takes an extra second. So that's, that's brain work as well, which my brain cells are kind of devoted to my corporate job, right? Mm -hmm. During those time periods. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but that's my point. It's a lot more that goes into that mental processing, you know, marrying the mental to the physical, you know, motor skills to make all this stuff Yeah, but even on the weekend when you're not working though, it's the same. No. Okay. So, so, okay. So that, (laughs) so that's a pet peeve, but I, I have my reasons, but, but don't say that I don't, get around to I don't ever get around I, I, to I doing it. It's time. just that I'm not doing it in your time. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. See, you want it to be done there or you want yeah. it to be done in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. But my time frame is not necessarily your time frame. Right. We operate on we have different, you know, time references. Right. But but that's the thing yeah. that the pet peeve is your thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, so all right, fine. And so along with that, you know, I guess I have a pet peeve that's kind of, you know, along those same lines mm-hmm. in the fact that you are the type of person who believe that everything has its proper place. Mm-hmm. And it, it points right to the dish thing. Like you say, <laughs> when you're not eating off the dish and you're done with it, it's proper places in that dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Right. But. You know, again, going back to how we came up, did we have dishwashers when we came up? Nope, we was washing dishes by hand. And and what did we wash those dishes? Immediately after, in the kitchen. What, you in said, the kitchen when? where? What are those? Yeah, what in are the those? Sink. In, in the, the sink. sink. Yes. In exactly. The sink. So what I'm doing is I'm going back to my upbringing. Like, you know, <laughs> when I grew up, we didn't have a dishwasher and the, the dishes went into the sink. So mm-hmm. why is the sink not good enough to hold the dishes now that we have a dishwasher? But with, even with us, even though the dishes were in the sink, we washed the dishes immediately after dinner. Immediately we was in there washing the Think dishes. Think about so, what you just so said. You just said after dinner. You... Once we was done eating, when the dishes were in there, we yeah. immediately went and washed them so that the dish the, the um so that the dish drain was cleared out. When you were done eating? Mm-hmm. Because I thought you I'm... said after dinner. Right. 
once we were done eating. See, we, see, we, okay. And, and so once the last person, because typically we all pretty much was done around the same time. Everybody got their dishes in the sink. So we had to But you said after every meal, though. Yeah, after every meal, we have to wash the dishes. Yeah, in my house, yeah. dishes, ha dishwashing happened a certain time of day. Oh, no. Happened, it happened it pretty much one time yeah, a day. We had a little schedule. <laughs> it was in the, like the early evening, typically? Yeah, yeah, yep. But anyway, so so that so that pet peeve mm -hmm. uh, of of feeling like and so with that mm -hmm. you can never sit anything down and I know like okay for instance walking into the bedroom and seeing my clothes on the floor oh yes right yeah. why are my clothes on the floor and I'm sure I'm certain <laughs> there are other women out there that probably do the same thing in fact in fact one of my other uh, social media friends I'm not gonna call your name she posted something on uh, Instagram. And I saw, and I said, you know what? We're just, we're going to be doing an episode on this uh, coming up. Uh, it made reference to um, explaining to her husband why your clothes. Oh, <laughs> if if you see clothes on the floor, I forget how it went, but they was basically saying if your clothes are on the floor, you obviously don't don't want them anymore. In other words. <laughs> They're ready for the trash. I heard some women said that that some women that threw their husband clothes away. They, they, they left them laying yeah, around. Yeah, you obviously have no use for these clothes yeah. anymore. Now I don't go that far now. They throw them on, throw them but on the floor. But if I'm making but, the bed, if they're on the bed, I'm making the bed. And you throw them get, on the floor. They get tossed, throw them on the floor. floor. They just get... You know, and so, that, but that's that's making a particular statement mm -hmm. to me as well when you do that. Mm -hmm. um, but you could just as soon sit them on the, the I've ottoman done that in front of the bed. Yeah, yeah, I've done that too. I've done both. Yeah, I've done both. But nevertheless, uh -huh. nevertheless, uh, <laughs> we each have our pet peeves, and we yeah. have more than that. Yeah. You know, but the most important thing, and I think the lesson from all this is, and it goes back to the reason for the topic. Yeah. We don't allow that to be a relationship killer for us. Oh, no. It's right? not that deep. It's not that deep. Mm -mm. And I think that's why pet TPs yeah. should be considered as such to be that they're petty. Yeah. And it should never be to a point where I think you have an otherwise fruitful relationship or potentially fruitful relationship um, that you jeopardize. Yeah. Due to some petty hang up. Yeah. That you have. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, that, and that's I that's where we're that. going with this whole thing. Yeah, I agree with that. So, uh, yeah, because I mean, otherwise you know, we, we wouldn't be together today. There, there's a <laughs> lot of things I'm sure. Uh, uh, you know about me. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you you see the bigger picture, I guess. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, I mean, and and then too, you can. I've got. I've even gotten better with that. You know, like I said, but it comes with conversation Com and compromise and compromise, conversation and compromise. And you know, I've gotten better. I mean, I used to be you know real bad you know with it, but I'm just I'm like oh okay, I just pick up and just do it myself or whatever. Because again, like you said. It's because I want it done at a certain time. And then you have to compromise and realize that everyone's not going to do it the way that you want to do it or when you want to do it. So if you're in a relationship, that may be something you want to consider compromising. Yeah, because no one is perfect. Not at all. No one is perfect. I think that's the first thing that we should all keep in mind is that mm -hmm. no, no, none of us are perfect. And we all have our little intricacies. We all have our shortcomings. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's about being able to see past and when we have those pressure points you mm -hmm. know that are that are touched that we just remind ourselves of the of the bigger picture and that it really is something petty right and if petty. you're looking at the pros and cons of the person are those petty pet peeves are they really that much of a con you know that can really you know impact the relationship that's what you need you know when you're you know determining that okay I mean, I mean, I, I guess that would be a good way, you yeah. know, of looking at it. Because sometimes too many cons can be a problem, but you know, look at it and address it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we want somebody that's what, gainfully employed, or we'll we'll say, not necessarily have to be gainfully employed, because just being employed is not the only way you can, mm -hmm. you know, have a, a decent economic status. But you want someone to be financially secure. Yeah, if they bring other know, other things to the table, you, you know, versus okay, you, you know, maybe you getting into bed with your clothes on, or maybe you wearing your shoes, or maybe I don't like the fact that you know you leave the. <laughs> you know, the the the, the, uh, the knob off the toothpaste or something like that, little small things like that. Mm -hmm. I think we need to put things in perspective and take things into consideration. Is this worth not being in a relationship or jeopardizing my relationship because of these few hangups? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I just thought it might be interesting to kind of address that, and, and we could probably get into it, you know, on a deeper level, which it really ain't that deep. Right. I think, I think that's the takeaway. <laughs> right. Right. It's really not that deep. But yeah. again, you know, we we realize that you know, we are, you know, we all can have our choices and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, you know, and and I I try to whatever situation is with with people. Uh, you know, when you enter their domain, you know, you want to you want to re- be respectful, mm-hmm. you know, of their requirements and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, I think that we as people, we can sometimes, you know, zoom out a little bit and, and consider the big, bigger picture of others mm-hmm. who we especially when we invite those others into our right. domain. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, to and that's the that's the way that I kind of see it when I'm inviting someone into my domain, then I think I owe it to them to maybe relax you know, yeah. on my own pet peeves and, and, yeah. and consider to maybe mm-hmm. make make things a little bit more comfor- comfortable yeah. for them. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, um, that's true. So, so that's, that, you know, know but uh, we stand in judgment of no one who chooses to operate differently. differently. Yeah. We're, We're just talking, talking about it, yeah. you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's pretty, pretty much it. it. We, we can wrap, wrap this episode. episode. You got, you got anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, we're going to wrap it. Simple. Simple. So, so we're, we're going to get back into, I don't know what we're going to do next week. week. Uh, uh, maybe we'll, we'll get back into some of our uh, content, uh, you know, that's maybe uh, continent-focused, yeah. Africa-focused maybe, yeah. because there there has been some um, some discussions that have that have happened, you know, on our on our channel page uh, around uh, some of the episodes and some just some discussions. Yeah. Uh, that that have taken place that I think is good for us to mm-hmm. to kind of talk about and yeah. allow that to drive some of the content because, excuse me, we see others who have YouTube channels out there who kind of touch on touch on certain things, uh, mm-hmm. those different dynamics, the diaspora, yeah, uh, dynamics and stuff like that. Uh, so I think we might we might touch on some of that uh, yeah. on the next episode next week to yeah. to address. Uh, you know, maybe some of the posters that we had, uh, some of the points that they brought up. Yeah, that'd be um, good. Yeah, yeah, and maybe even do uh, do a little snippet on our, our our property purchase experience, our real estate purchase over there. I, I told someone else that I would. Uh, oh yeah. Drop something there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, we do, uh, we'll wrap this up, and uh, as we like to say, at the end of the day, it's Mel and me. And this has been The The Podcast. Podcast. Y'all take it easy.